In this video we're going to use what we know about series and parallel circuits as well as electric circuit calculations. So just as a reminder how you should approach these questions, you want to first think about if you can simply put the variables into an equation like v equals ir or p equals iv because that will give you a simple solution. If you can't then you may also have to think about how current and voltage vary in series and parallel. So just a quick reminder, in series current stays the same whereas in series voltage splits up, current in parallel splits up and voltage stays the same in parallel. Let's use all this information now. It tells you the thermistor when it's set at a temp certain temperature the current through the ammeter and the current through the whole circuit therefore is 10 milliamps. Let's start by converting that into amps by multiplying by 10 to the minus 3. 10 times 10 to the minus 3 is just 10 to the power of minus 2 amps. Calculate the PD across the 540 ohm resistor. Well, we know the resistance across it and we know the current that's going to flow into it. So we can just use V equals IR. We can simply just use an equation. We don't need to worry about anything re relating to current and voltage in series and parallel. So that's going to be the current of 10 to the power of minus 2 in amps that we've already found. Multiply by 540, which multiplies to give 5.4 volts. Let's write that here, 5.4 volts. It then asks you to calculate the PD across the 1200 ohm resistor. We, don't, we know that 10 to the minus 2 amps goes into this junction, but we don't know how it splits up. And we definitely know for sure that it splits up because in parallel, we know current splits up. And it splits up depending on the resistance. We don't know the resistance of this is 1200 ohms, so we can't say that it splits up evenly. Instead, we use the idea that the total voltage in the circuit is split up in series across this junction here, which is in series with this resistor here, meaning... 15 take away 5.4 volts gives you the total voltage that goes into this junction. So let's do that. 15 take away 5.4 is actually equal to 9.6 volts. Now, what do we know about voltage in parallel? Well, it stays the same. That means that 9.6 volts reaches the top of the junction and also the bottom of the junction because this junction is in parallel. So that tells you that the voltage across this 1200 ohm resistor is actually just 9.6 volts. How do we calculate the resistance of the parallel combination? Well, let's think about the parallel combination, what we know about it. We know the total current going into it. We know the total voltage in it now, 9.6 volts. By the way, you don't add them together because it's the same in parallel. So you just take that whole value. So we can just use an equation to find resistance, which is, um, well, when you rearrange your vehicles IR by dividing both sides by current, you get that resistance is voltage divided by current. You take that total voltage of 9.6 that goes into the junction and you divide by the total current that goes into that junction. In this case, when you divide those together, you'll get a value of 960 ohms. Perfect. Let's now use that for part four of this question to calculate the resistance across the thermistor. So we know the total resistance of the parallel combination now, 960, and we know the resistance of one of the junctions in parallel. We now want to find the resistance of this other junction, other part of the junction. We use the fact that in parallel, let's write this out, 1 over the total resistance in the, of the parallel combination, which is 960, is equal to 1 over one of the resistors that are in parallel, which is this resistor of 1200 ohms, plus 1 over the resistance of the thermistor that we're trying to find. Um, you can start by taking away 1 over 1200 from both sides to get 1 over R equals 1 over 960, take away 1 over 1200, which when you put in a calculator actually gets you 1 over 4800. From here, to get the resistance of the thermistor, you do the reciprocal of both sides. You can just like swap the top and bottom of the fractions of both sides and we get that the resistance is just 4800 ohms. So that's the resistance across the thermistor. Lastly, it tells you the temperature of the thermistor is increased so that its resistance decreases. Yep, we know that because it, a thermistor is a negative temperature coefficient. When the temperature increases across it, the resistance across it decreases. So the resistance of this is now, sorry, this is less than 4800 ohms. Sit and explain what happens to the PD across the 1200 ohm resistor. Well, let's think about it. If this now has a less resistance, how does that affect this whole circuit? Well, what we know about resistance in parallel is that when the resistance of one of the junction decreases, the total resistance of the junction actually increases. So if the total resistance across this junction increases, What does that affect? That affects the amount of voltage that it takes up. 
So that means a larger proportion of the voltage, 15 volts, is now going to flow through this junction here, whereas um, a lower proportion is now going to flow through this junction here. So now that we know the total junction through this total voltage through this junction is larger, we also know that that voltage doesn't split up. It's just the same across both components because they're in parallel. So we say there's a larger voltage due to that specific reason. So one mark is for mentioning larger voltage. One mark is for mentioning because the resistance across the parallel combination increases, even though the resistance across the individual resistance decreases. Combo increases. And then the third mark is just for mentioning that because the resistance across the parallel junction um, increases, it will take up a larger proportion of the 15 volts. So it therefore takes up a larger proportion of the 15 volts. Hopefully that makes sense for this question. And yeah, that's everything for this question. If you have any questions with it, just let me know in the comments. Sorry about my handwriting, by the way, it's awful, especially in this video. Um, yeah, I'll be sure to type better in the next video. But thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe if this helped and like the video too. I'll appreciate it a lot. Thanks for watching.